हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट आई एम हियर फॉर द फोर्थ लेक्चर फ्रॉम द चैप्टर सॉलिड स्टेट सी क्लास ट्वेल्थ केमिस्ट्री दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट चैप्टर सो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न लेट्स हैव अ लुक सो टुडेज टॉपिक इज रिगार्डिंग द क्रिस्टल लैटिस एंड यूनिट सेल्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर दैट फ्रॉम हेयर ऑनली द एक्चुअल द चैप्टर सॉलिड स्टेट बिगन्स एंड इन लास्ट lecture what i have told you that in, in entire chapter that is the content of this entire chapter is based on the structure of different possible structure of ionic crystal solids okay so first have a look on the ncert then i am going to show you few animations through which i will try to make you understand this topic so crystal lattice and unit cell what is this i know you all are just wondering what is the term that i am using nothing very alien type contained actually just look at the sentence what is written the main characteristic of crystalline solid that it is regular and repeating pattern constituent what we have learned in initially that crystalline solids uh there's a difference that we have learned like anisotropic and isotropic and what we have learned that the atoms or the constituent particle are arranged in a particular pattern and that pattern is repeated throughout the crystal that is what we are going to study and we are giving some term specific term to this that the specific term is nothing but crystal lattice so just i am reading it so that you can understand because ncert is god book for every student who is going to appear for cbse exam first you have to read ncert the main characteristic of crystalline solid is a regular and repeating pattern of constituent particle this is the feature that we have studied for a crystalline solid right if the three dimensional arrangement three dimensional arrangement means when we give height to length and breadth it becomes three dimension so three dimensional arrangement of particles constituent particle what is constituent particle look i am just showing you the previous table that is that we have discussed in previous lecture if you have any doubt please go to my playlist there you will get lecture number 3 so here what we are studying that uh, ionic solid ionic solid see there is a lots of example like uh, ionic solid nscl mgo zns s4 they are having ions as a constituent particles so when constituent particles are arranged in a regular pattern in a three dimensional arrangement i am repeating when constituent particle what is constituent particle particle which make the solid ionic crystal solid it may be ions it may be molecules it may be atoms it may be kernels like in metals so when this constituent particles are arranged in a regular pattern in three dimensional arrangement we term it as a crystal let us this is what ncert is saying this is the definition that i am also going to show in your powerpoint so please if you have marker pencil notebook write it down so a regular three dimensional arrangement of point in a space is called crystal lattice now you may ask ma'am what is point just now i told you constituent particle when they are arranged in a three dimensional arrangement in a regular pattern is crystal lattice so here point is nothing we are referring the constituent particle as point just like we are assigning a new name to the constituent particle okay i hope it is clear a regular three dimensional arrangement of points in space is called crystal let us my dear student this is very important please underline it mark it and write it down in your notebook okay so this is crystal let us we understood and what is point point is the constituent particle just look at this this is a ionic solid ionic crystalline solid and what are this small small dot these are called points and just now what i told you points are the constituent particle maybe this is a ionic solid so constituent particle will be ions maybe it is a 
a covalent molecular solid. So, this will be atoms, there may be molecules. So, point can be atoms, molecules, ions and when they are repeated in a regular 3 day pattern, we say it is a crystal lattice. So, just have a look on the animation, you will get a just a little view. So, this is the solid that we are uh, learning here or understanding over here. So, this way a regular pattern you can have a look over there that the regular pattern is repeated. So, this is a entire crystalline solid, but if we give a microscopic view without this big big balls how it look. See here I am showing you a animation this is the un a small cell a small pattern which is repeated everywhere. And when this is repeated in a three dimensional arrangement, this makes something like this, that is entire solid. Again, this is repeating. So, what is repeating over here? I am just coming back to NCRT. What is repeating is known as unit cell. So, learn, my dear student, learn to draw this. How to draw this? Just make a box. and another box and then join the edges. So, what you are going to get a cuboid and this cuboid in every edges of cuboid the points are there. What are points? Points are the constituent particle and what will be the constituent particle? It may be ions, it may be atoms, it may be molecules. So, this constituent particles are sitting over here. When such pattern are repeated, sim when such similar patterns are repeated for entire range in a three dimensional, what we get? We get this. So, what is there in red? This is our unit cell. I hope you all have little bit knowledge of maths. What is the unit? Unit means that is the first basic thing, one. If I give you an example of wall, this is a wall. A wall is made up of, my dear student, what? Bricks. Uh, you can recognize this looks like a wall. So, wall is made up of a bricks. So, what is the single unit thing whose repetition makes the entire wall? It is a brick. So, brick will be my unit cell. So, brick is going to be my unit cell which when repeated we get a entire wall. So, similarly when a unit cell is repeated in a three dimension in a regular pattern what we get? We get a crystalline solid, crystalline solid or ionic solid. Okay? And this arrangement, this points, arrangement of this points is known as crystalline lattice. Now, this arrangement is possible 14 different ways. That means, there are 14 different ways by which we can arrange unit cells in space, in three dimensional space. There are 14 ways by which we can arrange unit cell. And this 14 ways are known as Bravis lattice. Please mark it down, underline it. It is very, very, very important. Bravis lattice. It is asked in CVSC question. What is Bravis? How many Bravis lattice are uh, possible? S at that time, don't wander and look at the walls. Bravis lattice means possible arrangement of unit cell in the space. And how many possible arrangements? 14. How many? 14. This is VVI important, very, very important. How many? 14. Okay, now let us move to another. Characteristics of crystalline lattice. Uh, let us move to the PowerPoint, there you can see it better. So, what are the characteristics of crystal lattice? First, each point in a lattice is called lattice point. What is lattice? Lattice is the entire crystalline solid. So, this is 
what is going a uh, unit cell is repeating and they are making entire crystal lattice okay so every point in the lattice is called lattice point or lattice site just go back to that every point every point every point is what lattice point or lattice site next point each point in a crystal lattice represent one constituent particle so constituent particle can be atom molecule or it can be ions and if it is a metal it can be kernels also okay next lattice points are joined by straight line to bring out the geometry this is very important because in a, in a next lecture i will discuss regarding the geometry of lattice because there are 14 possible ways to arrange the lattice so in every different way of arrangement we will get different geometry and every geometry will have its specific name and orientation so when we join the points by a straight line we get geometry of the lattice so i think this is clear next this is the definition of unit cell what is unit cell it is the smallest portion of the crystal lattice see this is unit cell this is unit cell this much is unit cell which when repeated we are getting entire crystal so this is called unit cell it is repeated in all di see in this direction it is repeated in this direction it is getting repeated and also in this direction it is getting repeated so in every direction it is in repeated to create the entire lattice i think it is clear understood now now very important thing we need to understand let come to the ncrt uh, let me uh, delete it to make the screen little bit oh my god what is happening uh let leave it i will do it later on so features there are some specific features of unit cell this is what this is unit cell this is a unit cell like a cuboid let me join this line also so this unit cell has six parameter how many parameters six parameter okay let me draw it so that you will get a better view unit cell so unit cell has how many parameters six parameters uh, what are parameters see what is unit cell it is a cuboid like structure right i am drawing it once again it's a cuboid like structure in a three dimensional space okay three dimensional structure so if you notice there are also arms of the cuboid so there will be a specific length to uh, to mention the arms of unit cell we have three parameter a b and c okay let it be the center this may be a i'm just putting the arrow let it be arm with the length b and let it be arm with the c now this two arm have a angle between them also am i right there is an angle between them also so angle between angle between arms is represented as alpha beta and gamma so count this 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six parameter which is used to differentiate unit cell now what we have learned that unit cell when repeated we get a crystal lattice and the, there are 14 different ways possible to arrange this unit cells to get different geometry so this is also possible that even unit cell can have little bit different geometry so it those geometry will depend on this six parameter suppose it may happen this is a unit cell i can have 
uh, this unit cell also like this arms will be little bit shorter this is also unit cell but little bit different from this if I am terming is A and this is B then B is little bit different from A then how it is different from this how A is different from B or how B is different from A because the arm length are different similarly it can happen the angle between the arms may be different so these are the six parameter which decide the structure basic structure of unit cell and whose repetition will give us a crystal lattice okay fine so there is a thing that you have to remember alpha beta angle angle between a and b will be gamma please make it a point angle between a and b will be gamma angle between b and c will be alpha angle between c and a will be beta then how you will remember this uh, trick is there a for alpha b for beta c for uh, gamma when there is alpha beta when there is a or b alpha beta then angle will be gamma fine when there is a beta gamma which is missing alpha beta gamma here angle will be alpha when there is gamma alpha what is missing beta then write it beta so this is all about your unit cell how you will define it so let's go back to the ncrt so ncrt is also saying the same thing just what i discussed to you right now so next ncrt question as i promised i will always discuss in text question this is the question related to the previous topic so if you have anything that you want to know just refer to the previous lecture classify the following solids in a different categories based on the nature of intermolecular forces operating on them for this you can easily refer to this table or i am just helping you out just look at this so this is our first question so first was potassium sulfate and it is ionic solid next is tin tin is what metal it is a metallic solid because metal means there will be kernels kernel of positive charge which have lost the electrons and electrons are moving here and there and due to the attraction between kernels and electron they will have a strong bond strong interforce strong interbonding between them and it will be strong next is benzene benzene is non-polar but it is molecule next is urea which is polar then is ammonia ammonia is also polar water is also molecular solid but it has hydrogen bond okay this has hydrogen bond h bond zinc sulfide is again ionic in nature graphite where covalent bond that means constituent particles are atoms here constituent particles are ions here constituent particles atoms so this way you can differentiate radium it's a metal so it will have metallic bond argon it is a molecular a non a molecular solid with a non polar in nature and silicon carbide is again a covalent solid okay i hope this all are clear next question solid a is very hard first property electrical insulator next property and as well as in solid or in molten state and melts at extremely high temperature one property two property three property and here is also one so this all four properties suggest what they are what in nature what type of solid they will be molecular solid or covalent solid ionic solid what type of solid just refer to the table just refer to the table what you will get the answer all are covalent solid all are covalent covalent solids have very high melting point they are very bad electrical conductor 
so that's why they are termed as insulator ionic solid conduct electricity in molten state why ionic solid like nsl suppose it is in solid state when it is in solid state this is plus this is minus due to strong inter electronic force of attraction they are holding each other very tightly so ions are not free so they will not conduct electricity but in molten state the force between them is little bit weak because the temperature they are little bit apart now they are free to move and they will conduct electricity what type of solids are electrical conductors malleable malleable means when they can be beaten into thin sheet ductile means when a uh, element can be beaten into wire so these all are properties of metals okay so i have uh, discussed all the intex question if you have any doubt please write it on a comment section thank you very much please if you like my video subscribe it thank you